So basically, you have these 10 lepers that meet Jesus on the outskirts of this town. They ask from far away. They don't even tell him what they want. They just say, Jesus, have pity on us. He has pity on them, knows that they're asking for healing, tells them to go to the priest. Nine of them keep going forward. One goes back, realizes he's healed, comes and thanks Jesus, and Jesus tells him he's saved. By implication, he's not happy with the other nine. Let me suggest to you that this reading is in fact pointing out to the world and to us the greatest sin that we face right now. Who are the people that hurt Jesus the most? The answer is always this. It's always those that are closest to Jesus that sin the greatest against him. And those that are far from him, Jesus will often say that they are ignorant of what they're really doing. I was asking God, God, where are we being ungrateful? Where is it that we are ignoring this amazing healing that we're being given and we're just walking away as if we've been given nothing? And the answer, when you put it in that way, becomes all too clear. It's in the Eucharist. When we receive Jesus in the Eucharist, we are receiving the infinite God of the universe in our mouth, in our body. Now think about that. If someone were to give you $100, how would you thank him? How long would you thank them? If someone were to give you $1,000 or $5,000, what would you do? Maybe you would take them out to dinner. Maybe you would write them a few text messages. You would call them over the next few days. You would celebrate with your family. What if someone were to give you $12,000? What would you do? That happened to me, literally, not too long ago. I set up a GoFundMe to help me pay for my medical bills, and this random person that I don't even know came in and doubled it and gave me $12,000. Amazing. For several days and weeks, my family and I were celebrating, and we were unbelievably excited and sending thank you messages to that person. Wouldn't you? So when the priest puts the God of the universe in your mouth, the Eucharist, how long are you thankful? How many minutes do you spend thanking him for that? How much time do you spend thanking God for the Eucharist? Or are you like the 90% that just keep going, doing what you're supposed to do, following the protocol? Or are you like that 10% that allows the spontaneity of your heart that breaks with protocol, says, no, 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 I gotta go back and thank Jesus and get on my knees. What do you do? Because you can actually measure this. You can actually think about the last five or six masses that you've gone to, and you can actually count how much time you spent thanking Jesus. You could see what you did. So you don't, you can't just say in theory, I'm very thankful. You can actually measure it. How much time and with how much intensity did you thank Jesus? Now, my friends, this is what's wrong with the world. We receive the greatest gift that the world can get, God, and we show the least amount of gratitude. That's why it's the greatest sin. Now, there's saints such as St. Padre Pio who would spend five, 10, upwards of 15 minutes after mass thanking Jesus. Now, obviously he knew more, so more is to be expected of him. But what about us? We also know a lot. We're devoted Catholics and Christians. Imagine what would happen to this world if those of us that know that it's Jesus in the Eucharist thanked him accordingly. I guarantee that we would have so many blessings poured out on us that they would flow out onto other people, convert and heal other people, and our world would be changed. And all these evils that we call out in others would be eradicated through the graces that we receive. This is my challenge to you. Increase the intensity and the amount of time you spend thanking Jesus each and every time you receive communion. If you do that, my friends, no pun intended, you will thank me. God bless you and I will see you in the next one.